All right, so we are going to finish up our review by filling out the graphic organizers for units five, six, and seven. I am going to do unit five right here, and then Miss Lucas is going to upload the graphic organizers for unit six and seven. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, and we can give you practice questions using these formulas if you want. Um, just let us know what you need. So this first graphic organizer, I ran out of um, ink in my printer, so I did not have the ability to print it, so I just hand wrote it, probably similar to how you guys are going to do it too. So this is the Unit 5 um, cheat sheet or graphic organizer. The first thing that we have to do is think about the variables or the um, symbols that we use for the different types of information or data. So remember there's a difference between parameter and statistic. We talked about this last week with Unit 4 and Unit 3. So remember, a parameter explains a population. So the parameter for proportion is a P, and the parameter for means is mu. A statistic is a number that describes a sample. So S sample P population. So the statistic for a proportion is going to be P hat. So your predicted proportion or your proportion based on a sample. And your statistic for means is X bar. Um, the correct use of variable and notation is going to be very important on the AP exam. This is a one way that you might lose points. Even though you know what you're talking about and you know what that number stands for, make sure you use the right notation. If you use X bar on accident instead of mu, you're going to get a point taken off and for something really silly. When we started Unit 5, we talked about sampling distributions. And remember that sampling distributions is the distribution of a sample. So if you took um, a sample, gathered the mean for that sample, and plotted it, then took another sample, got, got the mean, plotted that. Um, that is what a sampling distribution is. And the sampling distribution for p hat... So if you were looking at the sampling distribution for proportions, it's going to be a normal distribution where p hat is going to be your mean or where you start. So p hat is going to be in the middle and that is where it is normalized from. The sampling distribution for x bar is the same, but instead of having x bar, I messed up. So it, this shouldn't be p hat. This should just be a p. So where the population proportion is the center of your data. So for means, mu or the population mean would be the center of your data because remember your samples should be representative of your population. You would want most of your samples to have the same mean value as your proportion or your population. So you can um, assume that the distribution is approximately normal for two different ways. So for proportions, we use large counts. And remember, you have to check those conditions. So you have to check the large counts condition. And remember, large counts is NP is greater than or equal to 10. And N times 1 minus P is greater than or equal to 10. That's your large counts condition. And we checked these conditions so many times when we were in class. And you all remembered to check those conditions, so make sure you remember on um, the test. For means, it's a little bit different. Instead of large counts, um, you can assume if the population distribution is normal. So if population distribution, I'm just gonna put distri or distribution, is approximately normal, then you can assume your sampling distribution is approximately normal or CLT. And if you remember CLT, N is greater than or equal to 30. So if you have a sample size greater than or equal to 30, for a means question, you can assume that the distribution would be normal. It's important that you're able to assume the distribution is normal for some of those calculations that we're about to do here in a second. For mean, the calculations for mean, remember that the mean for proportions is equal to the population proportion, so that's going to be your center. And the mean for means is the mean 
of your x bar population is equal to the mean of your population. So it's just saying that's what we just did right here, that the center is equal to the true mean or the true proportion. Standard deviation, remember the standard deviation formulas were a little bit crazy for these calculations. The standard deviation for a proportion is going to be equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. And the standard deviation for a sampling distribution of means is equal to the standard deviation of the population over the square root of n. Remember that the population proportion would be given to you, so this is something you would plug in, and the standard deviation would be given to you as well. All right, so in order to use these formulas, remember you have to check the 10% condition. Remember that the 10% condition is that your sample size is less than one tenth of the population. So your small n is less than or equal to one tenth of your population size. Your sample cannot be too big. That's the 10% condition and that's important to check so that you can use these standard deviation formulas. Lastly, the z-score formula. I'm gonna move this. The z-score formula is going to be your value minus your mean over standard deviation, same way. So we're going to put all of this together. So for proportions, it's going to be z-score equals your sample proportion minus your population proportion over your standard deviation, which is p times 1 minus p over n. Same thing for means. z equals your sample mean, x bar, minus your population mean over standard deviation, which is equal to the standard deviation of the population, divided by the square root of n. That wraps up everything we did in Unit 5. Remember, Unit 5 was all about sampling distributions. A sampling distribution is the distribution of many samples. So, your um, center is always going to be the true population proportion or the true population mean. You can assume that the distribution is normal if you check your large counts condition or central limit theorem. Your mean values, the mean of your sampling distribution is going to be equal to the true proportion of the population and the mean of your sampling distribution is going to be the equal to the mean of the population. Your standard deviation formulas are given to you. 10% um, condition to use standard deviation formula and then the z-score formula. Online when I posted the graphic organizers I included those sentence stems. So I'm going to pull those up really quickly for you to see. Um, So when you log into Schoology, you're going to go to Digital Learning Assignments. You are going to go to AP Exam Reference Guide, and then the Units 5 through 7 Graphic Organizer, and that's where these are located. So on here, you can see that the graphic organizer that you and I just filled out is right here. We talked about parameters, statistics, we drew the sampling distribution, when is it normal, so forth. At the bottom here, I included the sentence stems. So if I were you, I would copy these sentence stems onto my cheat sheet, or if you printed this out, you have them, because they might ask you to calculate the mean, and then they're going to ask you to interpret it. So you're going to want these interpretation sentence stems. On this graphic organizer, we also included the type 1 and type 2 errors chart so that you don't make a silly mistake if they ask you about type 1 and type 2 errors. Remember that if the null hypothesis is true and you accidentally reject it, that's a type 1 error. 
or if the null hypothesis is false and you fail to reject it, meaning you accept it, but we don't use the word accept, that's a type two error, that's a false negative. So we included this chart right here, I'd copy that down or print out these papers. In the next video, Ms. Lucas is going to go through this graphic organizer with you, talking about confidence intervals and significance tests, as well as the difference of confidence interval and the different significance tests. As always, reach out to us with any questions. We are here to help you. We are happy to help you, and we can send you practice problems if you want to practice using everything that we just talked about. I hope you are well. I hope you are safe, and um, I will see you guys soon.